Hello, I'm Elena Devlikanova, a Democracy Fellow with the Center for European Policy Analysis. And welcome to Understanding Ukraine, a series of conversations with Ukrainian decision makers, opinion leaders and experts to discuss key issues to better understand Ukraine, its ongoing war with Russia, the future of the Ukrainian people and Ukraine's relationships with partners and allies. And today I am honored uh, to have this conversation with Galina Mikhailnyuk, a member of the Ukrainian parliament, uh, the servant of the People Party, and also uh, the deputy chair of the law enforcement uh, committee. And we will talk about the work of parliament in the wartime and how to win justice for Ukrainian people. Halina, thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, and my first question to you uh, is about the work of parliament in the wartime. Uh, Ukraine is at war for 14 months already, but it seems like Ukrainian parliament never stopped working. Maybe you can tell us more about your personal experience or how does it look like to work under fire? True to say that uh, we never stopped from the very first day of full-scale invasion. We are there in the parliament. Uh, the war the war started uh, half past 4 a.m. and half past 5 a.m. Uh, I was already in the parliament in my committee and basically at 7 a.m. Uh, we voted in favor of military stance in Ukraine and uh, a number of other adopted, crucially adopted uh, uh, for the change of life in Ukraine uh, laws and uh, there was no plenary session only the very first week, but afterwards, starting from early March, uh, nevertheless, that uh, Irpin, Bucha were occupied and it was just three kilometers away from, uh, the, from Kiev, from capital, uh, the parliament was working. Uh, the issue is that uh, uh, the votings are uh, with a sensor button and personalized, so they do take place only in the plenary hall. Uh, and uh, as you might know, that we have a fancy but glass roof. So one missile actually could cost us uh, lives of the whole par par parliament. Uh, but uh, for us, it was very much important to keep the country running and actually to show um, the whole Ukrainian society that we are still there and uh, um, Ukraine will succeed. The only issue is that um, there was no live streaming anymore because usually you can watch TV and see it how it's on live uh, uh, going on. But uh, for security reasons, uh, um, the timing when the next plenary session will take place uh, was not released to the public and just uh, uh, at the evening uh, of the citizens of Ukraine got information that there was a plenary session today. Uh, but uh, we do com continue to work. We will do it and we will succeed. Yeah, that's definitely. A number of things uh, were moved to online mode. So we are very much flexible. We are 24 seven. Sometimes we have plenary sessions even Saturday, Sunday. So we do not have any kind of banking holidays or leaves. The parliament works during the war every single day, yeah, nonstop. Well, that is very impressive. You and your colleagues are very courageous people. Uh, and it seems to very many people that Ukrainian parliament is mainly focuses on military issues and economic issues. Is that so? Yeah, you're right. Uh, well, actually, uh, my committee, my law enforcement committee is in top three committees in terms of how many draft laws uh, we have adopted within this 14 months. More than 100 uh, laws were adopted uh, in my committee. We, have, uh, we are my committee because we had to um, grant additional powers to the law enforcement agencies to criminalize a number of actions, uh, for example, to take a selfie in front of the tank uh, with uh, uh, putting on Facebook the direction where it's moving and how many vehicles. Uh, this is a criminal uh, act nowadays in Ukraine. So uh, we had uh, to really adjust to new reality and to do it very quickly. So the first three months, I should say that three-fourths on the agenda was uh, uh, within the criminal legislation and plus uh, military and defense, uh, uh, relocation of budget to the military and uh, um, lots of things that would uh, actually um, 
hopefully uh, make their job easier. Um, so that was the first half a year, mostly military and law enforcement character. And afterwards, um, uh, we've moved to more economic legislation that will help us to keep the economy of our country running. So I think these are three two, top three priorities that uh, uh, within the last 14 months, the parliament was more uh, in focus. Uh, last December, I have um, initiated the draft law that deals also with uh, forceful deportation of Ukrainian kids to Russian Federation. Unfortunately, we we face this horror reality that 16,000 of Ukrainian kids were moved. They are separated from their parents. Uh, some, in a number of cases, parents are alive, um, uh, but uh, Russian citizens, they make this kind of uh, genocidal act against Ukrainian kids. Uh, and um, we are in cooperation with International Criminal Court, with European Parliament on the point. And we do hope that we will have uh, our future, our kids as soon as possible. So. This is also that uh, a number of things that Russian military uh, do in Ukraine violating human rights. This is the first history ever. There is no precedent in our in other wars uh, uh, on uh, other uh, territory or states that children were were kidnapped basically from the territory. That's why yeah, a number of cruelties uh, and uh, um, situations that Ukrainian society have to live with or gone through, uh, this is the first time ever happens. And uh, yeah. This is very tragical. And deportation of the children is an act of genocide, and it's also a ground for uh, the warrant that was issued to the president of Russia by uh, the ICC. Um, and it seems to very many Ukrainians that the best way to protect both the children and their parents is uh, to accept Ukraine into NATO. Do you think there is a place for our country in NATO? We do believe that uh, we can uh, be a reliable partner of NATO and uh, in future member state, because I think that um, our soldiers, our military guys, they've proved uh, to be um, really not only stress resistant, but they, uh, uh, you know, on the field have shown that uh, uh, they can do their best and succeed. Uh, I'm also representative of Ukrainian parliament to the NATO parliamentary assembly, so it's also my day-to-day -day job to ensure that uh, um, in parallel with uh, uh, this kind of, we call it survival game in Ukraine, when we do our best to, to succeed, to have victory, but we are also in the process of reforms. So we keep, uh, we keep uh, uh, the reforms of uh, integration to NATO and both EU there. A number of times um, we had uh, deadlines when we, we had to adopt certain, legis certain pieces of legislation because uh, of our commitments on this NATO EU integration path. And the, we were in the plenary in Kiev and there was an air raid. So the whole parliament has to go down to the bombshell. We stayed there for two, three hours. Then without any stop or break, we went out uh, and continued voting and discussing. So we do not postpone the reforms in ukraine till the war will end we do our best to succeed now and uh, um, there is no other way that we will succeed um, I think that um, very many developed countries are looking into Ukraine and hoping uh, that it will succeed and it will win and my last question for you uh, how do you see the future of ukraine victory is without any doubts victory peaceful and free Ukraine. Um, hopefully all our uh, refugees are back to Ukraine. Um, recovery. Uh, so uh, we do hope that uh, the victory will be within our 
1991 territory, so with Crimea and Donbass. Then we will have uh, a tribunal over Russian uh, war criminals, uh, uh, reparations from Russian Federation to Ukraine, and recovery of new, more than uh, successful Ukraine uh, with uh, guaranteed security. And um, yes, uh, that will be bright future. We, we do believe in this. We are very much motivated and we, we do our best 24-7 uh, uh, to bring this moment uh, as soon as possible. And of course, this victory will be shared with our key international partners who do their best uh, um, f you know, to preserve Ukraine on the territory of uh, you know, democratic and free world. Thank you very, very much, Halina, for your time. Thank you for speaking to us. Thank you for watching this episode of Understanding Ukraine. If you are interested in our work, please visit cepa.org.